Good afternoon everyone and happy Republic Day. Just have a brief introduction about me. My name is Sanjeev Kumar. I did B.Tech from Baba Institute of Technology. In 2014, I qualified CTS Combined Defense Service Examination. In 2016 and 17, I wrote two times UPSC mains. In 2017, I wrote one book that is Civil Service Main Examination Practice Workbook in current publication. I joined Vedanta IS Institute. Over there, I developed the content of Indian polity, governance and social justice. I took the responsibility of conducting test series and also discuss the test series in class. After that, I joined Delhi Career Group, a Defense Preparatory Examination Institute. Then, in 2020, Jan, I went to Hyderabad. I joined Satya IS Academy. I teach Indian polity and constitution. Then I went to Itanagar and Nahar Lagoon. Over there, I teach Indian polity and constitution and four batches. During lockdown time period, I wrote a script that is modified version of the content in which infographic information go along with the text. So I joined. ITV network in Okla, Noida. In July 2020, I joined Plutus IS Academy as a faculty of economics. I teach Indian economy, uh, means I completed Indian economy in one batch. Now, a days, I'm holding the responsibility of conducting test series for the prelims and mains. And forthcoming batch, I will also teach Indian economy. Now, I am going to start Indian economy. What is economy? Why we study economy? How it assists in day-to-day -day life? These are some basic questions which are associated with the economy. Now, what is economy? Economy is a Greek word derived from two words. Oikos means household, a state or a country. Nomos, nomos means custom lodge how we should utilize laws customs rules and regulations to achieve maximum profit how we should frame the policies to achieve our target how we should utilize our resources in efficient way a scottish economist the father of modern economics Adam Smith held that economics is all about efficient utilization of limited resources, efficient utilization of scarce resources. Now, there is a question. Is India able to use its resources efficiently? Think, if not, which type of resources India is not able to use efficiently? Number one, human resource. How India is not able to utilize human resource efficiently? Lot of people are unemployed. They are seeking the job, but they are not getting right kind of job at right time. So, their potential is not being utilized to develop the economy. Another example, Adugami, suppose, have capacity of 100 student, means in its classroom, 100 student can study at one point of time. Suppose, 30 seats are vacant, means only 70 student are present in the class and 30 seats remain vacant. Then we can help that Adugami is not able to utilize its classroom resource efficiently. Consider land. In Western UP, farmers of Punjab and some other states, they are harvesting three crops, on and average three crops in a year. While in Eastern UP, in Eastern India and some other places, farmers are harvesting only one or maximum two crops in a year. 
so we can say that in some regions farmers of india are not able to efficient utilize land resources and we can also compare it with the international countries in china and usa farmers are able to grow around 10 quintals of wheat over one acre of land consider that okay while in india farmers are able to grow only five quintals wheat or rice over an acre of land so we can say that farmers are not able to efficiently utilize the land another example building okay suppose during lockdown time period during corona epidemic building which consists 10 flats the landowner is not able to hire all the rooms means all the flats are not occupied by the people okay so we can say that if five flats are vacant and five are filled we can held that the building is not being efficiently utilized so it is all about efficient utilization of the resources now further moving towards branch of the economy that is microeconomy and macroeconomy if i talk about the microeconomy suppose there is a forest if i calculate the value or monetary value of one tree then it comes under microeconomy in my pocket 1000 rupees i have whether i utilize it to purchase book of ramesh singh or makapala okay whether i should is spend it to watch movie to entertain myself or whether i should use it to eat pizza burger and so on so how i should utilize it to get maximum satisfaction to get maximum pleasure it is microeconomy macroeconomy if i talk about the great depression during 1930s the output fall around 33 percent employment fall around 23 percent so british economist john maynard keynes british economist john maynard keynes public published his book general theory of employment interest and money general theory of employment interest and money in which he held that capitalist model of economy require some kind of government intervention it is non-sustainable means capitalist economy cannot be sustainable cannot develop on its own it also requires some kind of regulations he link the role of employment role of interest the role of market activities and its regulation so we understand better eco uh, macroeconomy in better way we understand macroeconomy in better way in macroeconomy if we are talking about the forest so we are calculating the monetary value of all the trees suppose if government of india want to achieve double digit growth double digit gdp growth then how much investment is required what should be the inflation rate what should be the employment rate if rbi wants to keep inflation within a limit of two to four percent what should we repo rate what should be slr or crr so that bank can provide maximum loan to the farmers to the private industrial person okay so when 
we talk about economy as a whole when we link the factors of the economy then we talk about the macroeconomy i hope macroeconomy is now clear to you means how much investment is required how much employment how much inflation okay how much money circulation is required to keep the economy on right track that is macroeconomy now further each and every country wants to become rich to become rich each and every country have to produce more for production certain questions arises what should be produced what should be produced whether country should produce more wheat or rice whether it should produce more cars or more cycles whether it should produce more electric vehicle or more petrol vehicle okay so what should be produced how it should be produced how it should be produced means whether industry should be labor oriented means uh, handloom industry should be strengthened or whether more mechanization should be involved to increase the pace of production to reduce the cost of production or for whom we should produced for whom we should produced whether our targeted audience is poor people we are producing more cycles more nano cars or maruti 800 or whether we are producing more luxury car mercedes ferrari and so on so what is our target audience okay uh, for whom we are producing if what should be produced how it should be produced for whom it should be produced decided by the government decided by the government then it is a socialist country then it is a socialist or communist country if all these questions decided by the market forces then it is a capitalist economy okay just after the independence india was more close to socialist model means technically india was not a socialist country at the time also but it followed certain pattern of socialist model okay because socialist model uh, was very successful in form of ussr which inspired india and several other countries so india also try to follow or adopt certain strategy or certain patterns of socialist model that model liberated post 1991 reform means whatever we have certain pattern of socialism we liberate them and we are now it is very close to capitalist model i can assure you that most of the countries now it is are moving from socialist to capitalist model most of the countries are moving towards capitalism why india is moving towards capitalism why other countries are moving towards capitalism although right now at present time there is no country which is completely socialist which is completely capitalist most of the countries followed mixed economy that was also highlighted by english economist john maynard keynes during 1936 okay so india is moving towards capitalist economy why the question is why because in capitalist economy market force decided the price market force decided the demand of the products so what should be produced how much it should be produced and for whom we should produce all such factors decided by the market thus we are able to efficient utilize of your resources means in capitalist economy resources utilized in a better way most of the time although it is not blindly that capitalist model suits to each and every country or socialist model failed in each and every country it depend on the demography of the country it depend on several other factors as well but on an average we can conclude that 
in capitalist economy we can utilize our resources in a better way now to understand economy in better way we divided economy into four sectors number one government sectors what is this government sectors the companies the offices or post which developed with the help of public money the money of tax we call it government sector okay it include ministries railways roadways police defense personnel security forces and so on all the public sector undertaking all the government offices government companies all police force etc comes under government sector their salary charge on public money okay so government sector is clear to you now comes to another sector household sector just tell me a person serving a district as district magistrate he will come under household sector or he will come under government sector an engineer or section engineer who is working in railway will come under household sector or government sector a doctor who is serving in aims will he be part of government sector or private or household sector so each and every individual each and every individual whose consumption decision taken jointly he comes under household sector all the citizens of india 130 crore population of india comes under household sector we are disassociating the company with that individual person who is working in railway who is working as district magistrate okay we keep all such post or offices one side and we keep all such individuals other side means whose consumption decision individual or group of individuals whose consumption decisions taken jointly means their kitchen is one then we consider them as one household suppose you are preparing for upsc okay at your home you are living with your family then you will be considered as one household along with your family if you migrated to karol park for your preparation you hired a room on rent then you are staying over there you start to cook your food your family will be one household and you will be another household if you are staying in pg then what will happen if you are staying in pg then all student suppose pg has capacity of 100 student okay whose meal is prepared at one place whose consumption decision is taken jointly we consider a pg as one household i hope this household is clear to you now further moving to external sector external sector means the sector which influencing indian economy from outside of india foreign government foreign citizens and arise indian diaspora trade relations anything which is influencing indian economy from outside of india we consider it as external sector now the last and important sector is private sector private sector means the offices post which created by individual the profit loss the profit or loss bear by the individual by the entrepreneur okay we consider them under private sector a firm may be regional maybe mnc multinational company comes under private sector 
Mukesh Ambani comes under household sector, but his company, his business, his organization comes under private sector. Riksha puller, private sector. Business owner, private sector. Okay, so all such personal who invest their money, who earn profit, who bear loss, that belongs to private sector. Now, what is ultimate goal of the private sector? Okay, to earn the profit. That is one of the target of private sector. But how? They earn the profit by producing goods and services. By producing goods and services. Suppose Educami is producing educational services. It is producing educational services. To produce educational services, what kind of resources we need? To produce educational services, we need input. What are inputs? Entrepreneur. Okay. Another natural resources. Natural resources is what? The resource which is not man-made which provided by the nature that is land okay another is capital what is capital sources for the educami whiteboard or nowadays digital board uh, ac camera furniture means table chairs podium okay building all such comes under capital goods they are utilizing or utilized to produce educational services labor who is labor the teachers the all staffs who is working okay including office boy all comes under labor if entrepreneur is also teaching he is also managing or going in his company or educational institute at its scheduled time and he is working over there then he also comes under labor he is also entrepreneur entrepreneur may be individual or may be group of individual okay but he is also a labor if he is teaching he is working okay they all come together to produce output to produce educational services and return they will receive money or they will receive fee by the student this fee is going to be distributed among all if this fee or money is provided to entrepreneur then it is called as profit if the same money is provided to landowner it is called as rent for capital goods it is called as interest for labors it is called as wage so these are remuneration profit rent interest and wage these are remuneration and factors of productions are entrepreneur natural resources capital and labor they are producing educational services or a firm can produce goods or services goods further can be divided intermediate goods or final goods if they are final goods they can further divide it into durable goods non durable goods or services okay durable goods which sustain for long time generally 2 to 3 years uh, just like ac fan television okay uh, computer all are durable goods consumer goods which sustain for very short time period okay uh, just like uh, pizza burger beverage products and so on these are consumer goods now understand capital goods and detail each marker that is utilized over whiteboard in which we fill the ink it is consumer goods or capital goods think it is both consumer as well as capital good if we are using marker only one time means we purchase the marker we use it we throw it then it is consumer good if we are refilling it again reusing it then it will be considered as capital good 
the marker of digital good will be considered as capital good now just tell me electricity is it capital good is it consumer good or it is none ne neither capital good nor consumer good electricity so i am talking about the electricity that is flowing through a wire that is flowing through the free electrons or carried by the free electrons i'm talking about that i'm not talking about the led or uh, tube light or rod that will be part of capital goods so each and every second this electricity is being consumed the new electricity is being produced the new electricity is being generated by the generator or turbine that is outside the institute and it is being utilized to produce educational services okay so it is being transformed it is being destroyed otherwise we do not require to continuously run the generator okay so electricity is not a capital good why it is not a capital good understand three characteristics of the capital goods what are these capital goods are output of man made process means capital goods are produced by the human being so electricity is also produced by the human being first characteristic is right okay is matching with the capital good now second check the second characteristic it is being utilized the output of man made process may further being utilized to generate capital or consumer goods okay to generate goods final goods okay so electricity is being utilized to generate educational services means the output of man made process is being utilized to sell in the market to sell to the student okay so second condition is also being fulfilled the capital goods can be utilized as intermediate goods to produce further goods and services okay now third characteristic while utilizing the capital goods as intermediate goods they should not be transformed they should not be destroyed they should not be lost or consumed electricity is being transformed electricity is being lost okay is being lost so each and every time or second the new electricity is being produced old electricity is being consumed we can held that the third characteristic is not being fulfilled okay so electricity is not a capital good to understand capital goods or consumer goods we have to first understand whether it is a good intermediate good or it is a final good only final goods can be categorized into capital goods and consumer goods electricity is not a final good it is intermediate goods so we cannot characterize it as a consumer good or a capital good okay now your doubt may be clear with respect to the electricity further i am going to discuss the investment or gross investment what is this the consumer goods the consumer goods in an economy being utilized consumed or lost while capital goods remain in the economy to use and for the production capital goods remain as it is in the economy for further formation of economy so capital goods are important for development of new economy consider there are 
coffee machines worth rupees 1000 100 rupees each so consider in 2009 uh, 19 there are 10 coffee machines so we can uh, help that the size of economy is 1000 rupees and 2020 these coffee machines produce coffee worth rupees 500 50 rupees each machine is producing the coffee so the size of economy in 2020 will be 1500 rupees now we further increase our investment 30% or 40% okay 40% so in 2021 coffee machines will be 40 and they will produce the coffee worth rupees 700 so size of economy will be 1400 plus 700 2100 so it led to formation of new economy the development of capital goods is necessary for development of new economy for development of growth okay for increasing our growth we require more capital goods china continuously producing around 40% of the capital goods while india uh, remain 1.5 times or uh, means china remain 1.5 times or sometimes two times from the capital goods more than india okay so the size of chinese economy is going faster than indian economy because capital good remain in the economy while consumer goods being utilized now just tell me i am talking about the investment if there is no investment in a financial year 2000 19 and 20 there is no investment in the country in year 2019 and 20 then the output will fall rise or remain same or none of the above four options if there is no investment means investment to remain zero in financial year 2019 20 then output will number a fall number b right number c remain same or d none of the above so it will remain same how as i gave examples of coffee machines suppose there are 1000 coffee machines and 2019 2020 again there is no investment no further uh, increment in the size of coffee machines so again 10 coffee machines production they again produce the coffee of worth rupees 500 they also produce coffee of worth rupees 500 in 2019 again they produce in 2020 so if there is zero investment in an economy still production may remain same or will remain same now investment what do you understand by this word gross investment i hope so it is still not clear to you uh if i talk about baiju and akas iit but baiju purchase akas iit worth rupees 1 billion can we call it investment suppose a branch a new branch opened by macd in cp worth rupees 10 million can we call it investment or japan invested in the bullet train okay suppose japan spent it 5 billion rupees and development of bullet trains from amdavad to mumbai 
can we call it investment it is just a transaction in case of baiju and akas earlier akas owner has ownership means akas education private limited he has people and baiju has money now money is with akas uh, akas owner and people hold by baiju so it is just a transaction it is not an investment if macd is purchasing potato worth rupees 500 to make french fry can we call it investment we cannot call it investment okay in the same way if japan purchases electricity of worth rupees 5000 crore we cannot call it an investment then what is investment investment machines tools whether it is being developed within india or japan brought from japan or another country suppose germany or france they bring metro trains they bring machines they bring tools they are being utilized in the formation of the economy okay just like with the same example coffee machines if number of bullet trains will increase if there is zero bullet train and next year suppose there is 10 bullet trains they will produce services that will contribute in the size of the economy so that will we call as investment but the money is spent it in other things in consumer goods we cannot call it an investment in 2020 one question uh, in the mains asked explain the meaning of investment in an economy with respect to capital formation explain the meaning of investment in an economy with respect to capital formation i hope you understand better what is capital investment what is investment in an economy how it led to formation of the new economy so you can address such type of the questions i hope uh, this topic is clear to you now it is around 38 minute i think it is sufficient thank you very much